So now we'll be running a canine distemper and a body test kit from Symbiotics. First, get out the holder for our test wells. We'll be running five unknown samples today in addition to a positive and a negative control. The wells included within this kit are coated with canine distemper virus or CDV antigen. I've broken off seven wells for our five samples and one well for our positive control and one well for our negative control. The unused wells are resealed and put back into the kit. This kit is allowed to come up to room temperature for two hours before use. After use, it is stored in the refrigerator at a temp of 4 degrees C. So now that my wells are fixed into place, I'm going to need to use um, the, the 10x wash solution here. I'm going to need to make that into a working solution. So what I've done, I've used the 10x wash concentrate to make my 1x wash solution. So I'll be using, or I used one part of this 10x wash solution to nine parts of distilled water. I'll also be using type 2 or distilled water as an additional rinse step. Before adding my samples, I'm going to use a small piece of tape to make sure my wells are firmly attached to the holder. All controls and reagents are clearly labeled within this kit by letter and color. I'll be using first my positive control as A and putting one drop into my first well, well number one. What I like to do after mixing is do one drop first into the sink to make sure all air bubbles have been removed and then add my one drop into the well. Next, I will use the negative control, which is also the sample diluent, and I will add one drop for my negative control and then one drop for each of my five samples. Again, mixing thoroughly, doing a test drop, one drop then in each of the remaining wells. I'll next use the sample loops to inoculate each of the wells. As you can see, the loops are very, very small. It's important that you get an accurate sample rather than just an air bubble forming in the end of the loop. So I'll take my first sample, mix it well, Insert the loop air bubble. Sometimes it helps to work the loop around. I can see I have a nice sample inside the end of my loop. I will then insert it into my first sample well. I'm moving the loop back and forth, thoroughly mixing but not splashing into the other wells. I will proceed on with the next sample. Again, mixing my sample thoroughly.
making sure I have a sufficient amount of sample. Mixing properly and then discarding. For each sample that I'm testing, I'm going to use a fresh loop so that I'm not contaminating any of my samples. Got a nice sample. Putting it into the well, mixing thoroughly, but not splashing. The samples that I'm using with this kit are serum samples. You can also use a plasma sample to test for antibody. I'm just going to gently tap the holder to make sure all of the reagent and solution is down to the bottom of the well and everything is mixed properly. It will now incubate at room temperature for five minutes. Now that our five minute incubation period is over, I'm going to remove the liquid from the wells into the drain. And then I'm going to use my tighter check wash, which again is one part of the 10X concentrate that comes with the kit, and then nine parts of distilled water. I'm going to use my wash to thoroughly clean the wells, trying to avoid any bubbles if possible. Again, I'm filling the wells very liberally, and then I'm removing the excess liquid. The washing step with this kit is very important. You cannot overwash these wells. So I've washed once. I will now turn the holder over bang onto paper towel to remove any excess liquid or any bubbles that have formed. If any bubbles do form in your wells, you're able to use one of the loops you use to inoculate your wells to just pop the bubble. Now that my wells are clean, I'm going to use one drop of the conjugate, which is labeled a blue C. Again, I'm mixing thoroughly, doing my test drop into the sink, and then I'm going to do one drop into each well. First, my positive and negative control, and then my five unknown samples. Again, mixing gently, but avoiding any splashing. This will sit for five minutes at room temperature. Now that our five minute incubation period is over, I'm going to take the holder and shake all the liquid from the wells. I'm again going to use our Titer Check 1x working wash that we've prepared to wash all of the wells. Again, you can't overwash. Washing is an important step. I'm going to remove the liquid from the wells. I'm going to repeat the washing step three more times. Again, I'm adding quite a bit of wash. I just want to make sure those wells are cleared of anything that's not bound down to the bottom. Now my third wash. Now, after the last wash, I wanted to make sure that all wells are free of the wash solution. 
helps to fix the wells down to make sure everything stays in place. Now in my wells, I do have some bubbles that have remained from the washing solution. I'm going to take one of the inoculating loops that's included with the kit to just pop any of the excess bubbles that I have. You can see I'm taking the loop and just popping the bubbles through multiple wells. Since I'm just popping bubbles, I'm not touching down into the bottom of the wells and contaminating what's down bound at the bottom. It's okay to use one well or one wand to pop the wells and the bubbles in multiple wells. At this point, you may also use some type 2 or distilled water to do one rinse through the wells. This will bring any bubbles that are still down at the bottom of the wells up to the surface. At this point in the test, the kit does recommend washing two or more times with distilled water to make sure that all bubbles are out. All bubbles are removed, the wells are nice and dry. I'm now going to take the substrate, which is labeled with a green D, and I will add two drops to each of the wells. Again, giving it a thorough mix, a test drop, and now two drops to each well. Two in my positive and negative controls, and now into my unknown samples. As with previous steps, I'm going to shake gently to ensure there's a thorough mix. Being careful not to splash into any of the wells. Now this will sit for five minutes at room temperature. Now that the five minute incubation is complete, I'm going to gently shake the holder to mix the solution within the wells. I will now read the color development in each well. Our first well is our positive control. Our second well is our negative control. You can see a nice blue color has developed within the positive control, showing that it is positive for distemper antibody. Our negative control has no antibody present. You can see that the color has remained clear. There's no color development. So the positive control is positive blue. Negative control is negative. It's clear. Then we'll begin reading the unknown samples. You can see my first two samples have both turned a nice dark blue color. Both will be positive. My third unknown is still clear. There's no color development. We will call that negative. Again, it matches the negative control. The last two of my samples have both developed a nice blue color. They will both be positive. With this test, any blue color development that is seen is considered positive. Woo! <laughs>